The AMT Ertl's three-car classic set featuring the 57 Ford Fairlane, 57 Thunderbird, and 63 Ford Galaxy. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model car building fans. Are you looking for a great set of three cars that you can build that are really cool and all that kind of jazz? Well, this set's mine, <laughs> but I'm sure you can find it on eBay or whatever. This is an older set from 1993. I've had it for quite a while. And today I want to show you all three cars, including some builds that I've done in the past of the three cars. So stay tuned to check that one out. But before we begin our video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And now without further ado, let's begin this gigantic review. And now we go all the way back to, well, roughly 1963 with this amazing AMT Classics model kit set. This is a complete three-in-one kit set. Uh, these came out quite a lot. Originally, this kit came out in 1993, but the models inside it are actually from about 1962-1963 from AMT. I actually own a set of the original instructions for the 57 Fairlane and Thunderbird. I don't have any for the Galaxy, though. And unfortunately, this box is so big, I can't fit it all underneath my camera here. And I have my camera fully out on my overhead stand. Anyway, I'll do the best I can here. So there we've got a picture of our 57 Fairlane, the 63 Ford Galaxy, only available in this kit, and of course our 57 Thunderbird. And I can't do the ends of the box, but trust me, they look pretty much like the tops. If we just uh, turn this one over, you can see that great V8 engine for the Ford Fairlane 500, the Thunderbird dual carburetor version for 63 on the Galaxy 500, and of course our 57 Ford Thunderbird engine right there. And then here, <laughs> I know, what can you do? There is a write-up of the 57 Ford Fairlane, 63 Galaxy, and 57 Ford Thunderbird, which I'm going to put in the description down below. But anyway, now I won't be able to slide this thing in easily on film. But what I'll do is I'll just take the lid off here. And you can see that we have all three models in bags. So this is, of course, the 63 Galaxy bag. The Galaxy instruction sheet. Instructions for the 57 Thunderbird and 57 Ford Fairlane. Of course, subscribe to the blue printer if you still can. I don't know. There's our 63 Ford body. There's a ton of tires, and they're for everything. We've got our chrome, our 57 Ford here in this bag. Got glass all loose. More chrome for the Thunderbird. And there's the Thunderbird there. We have all our taillights. The engine block, I guess, fell out of that bag for the 63. And then, like I said, lots of tires and more chrome. That's a 57 Ford chrome there. So what I'm going to do is clear this all out of the way and then we can take a look at these kits individually. So the first car we're going to start off with in our three pack here is the 1957 Ford Fairlane 500. The 57 was the most drastic styling change Ford had made since the introduction of its 49 models. A larger, more luxurious Ford its length was accentuated even more by its long, sweeping side moldings. It had canted fins, curved belt line, and extremely wide grille, and it gave it a, that gave it a pleasing look that was accepted by both young and old. So, now let's take a look at our instructions here. And as you can see, there's a huge write-up down below under the picture, which, uh, well... I could put in the comments below, but I don't know how much uh, room I got down there at the description. And then, of course, there's all our safety things. And as we open it up, we can take a look at our multiple engine options here. I'll just zoom in. 
So step one shows our 312 cubic inch Ford V8 with, of course, the cylinder heads here, our distributor intake manifold, the left and right hand side of the engine block with the starter in place and our transmission molded on the back, the uh, oil pan which is plated and we also have our front timing cover down here. It does say if you're doing the stock to paint the oil pan semi-gloss black and cement to the bottom of the engine. For custom, it recommends to paint the oil pan with a light spray of dull coat and to cement to the bottom of the engine. Sort of gives it an aluminum look as opposed to a chrome look. Next up we have the stock engine assembly. And here of course we see our air cleaner, which I recommend to paint aluminum. Our chrome valve covers left and right. Exhaust manifolds, the carburetor underneath, the generator, our fan belt and pulleys, as well as our fan. The second option on our engine is right here. This is the supercharged engine. And although here it says it's a custom motor, actually Ford did make these. Uh, they were rated at 300 horsepower, but only 208 buyers selected this because it was a $500 option on top of the price of the car, of course. So you have these Thunderbird valve covers, which are gluing in place instead of the Ford ones. There's our supercharger right here with the little hose out the back. This is a Paxton supercharger. And over here we have a pressure box. And then we have our left and right hands manifolds, the special racing ones for this engine. And then, of course, we're reusing the... No, this is a different fan belt and pulley because it has to go into the supercharger. And there's our fan here, as well as our generator down below. Here we have our custom motor, which was an update back in the 1990s. Uh, just to modernize this kit a little bit and bring it into the new age from the 60s. So here we have a billet air cleaner going on the top, which is brand new. And then we can add in our T-Bird valve covers, our four-barrel carburetor, and our, of course, our intake manifold and all that. There's using the custom headers and then the regular fan belt and pulleys, the fan and the generator. And next up we have wheel assembly 3A, which shows our nice Ford turbine wheel covers here going into the Firestone Supreme tires with the front brake and backing pad plate going in here into the inner wheel half of our front wheels. And for the back it's much the same, uh, except this one here has a hole in the back of the brake backing plate. This one has a pin which we'll see where that becomes useful later. And then if we just slide this over in this direction, they're showing us the tire preparations. There are some cord or a, a blank in here, which you have to cut out with the number 11 hobby blade. Here it shows you could paint in a white wall if you want it on the wheel, the stock wheel. And now here again is new for 1993 these wheel covers in here, which are sort of similar to the Corvette style. These plug into the Firestone Wide Oval Super Sport tires, and then of course carry on onto your front brake backing plate, the one with the pin, and the wheel backs. And of course in the rear you actually get a different type of wheel back here, which you can put the metal axle through. Down below we have the chassis assembly, and this is step five, the suspension. And here it shows the front suspension going up here. We've got a left and right hand spindle. And that little hole is the one that lined up with the pin on the back of the front brake backing plate. And then, of course, we have our tie rod in here. So you can actually have this car with posable steering. And then in the back, we have two shock absorbers, a differential with the springs molded in place. And it's got a top and a bottom. And all that goes on to our chassis right here. And of course it gives you the color callouts, gloss black. Actually, pretty much everything under here is gloss black. So there you are. Once you get through step five, you have step six, which is the engine and wheel assembly. And here you can either put on the stock wheels or of course your customs. Metal axle is in the back. And then here again, the pins will glue in place. And you got your choice of the stock wheels or the custom. And then your engine will go in and hook here onto the drive shaft and onto the differential. Carrying on with our chassis assembly, we have the stock assembly. This of course is the interior. Uh, maybe they made a mistake up here. I should say interior assembly. At any rate, you get this nice dashboard 
with a rear view mirror, a steering column with a uh, shifter lever that you just glue in place here. You would leave this off, of course, on your custom. The bucket has the uh, pedals in the front. Then you've got your bench seat in two pieces, gluing in the front, and the rear bench seat gluing into the back. And you'll notice there's a notch out in here. That, of course, is for the opening doors in this kit. Now, some new tooling came in in 1993 for this kit, and that was in the custom assembly. Here we get some modern, for the era, bench bucket seats, pardon me, uh, a new da or a dashboard, and then gauge panels underneath. Here's our console with the shifter lever going in place. They brought in a brand new steering column for the custom for this year and a new steering wheel. And then you get your old stuffed puppy, it's supposed to be a stuffed animal. This came in the original uh, 57 um, Ford Fairlane kit. Next up we have our body assembly and here you can see our doors right and left. And there's a little hinge that you glue in place. Be careful on these to make sure you don't snap one off. I've done that on my originals. <laughs> There's the taillight bezels going in place as well, and our front and rear window, which are separate pieces, which is quite nice. And if we just slide the instructions down, you will see... Here, let's go right there. There's the doors, and it shows you how to put the hinges on. And then if we go a little more... There we go. We have subassembly B, and this is showing the glass going in on the vent windows, and then our interior door panels covering up the hinges and all of that. And then our assembled interior will pop up underneath, and there are some little loops in here and pegs underneath that uh, trunk lid in order to get this all to line up. There's also a little flat tab thing which will hook up underneath on the firewall. Step 10 is subassembly C. This is our hood going in place, and there are little tabs right here because the hood swung up this way, so they'll pop in there. We've got a heater motor, a battery, and our radiator tank, which is plated, but they do say to dull coat it so it looks a little more aluminum. On the real car, this might not have been chrome plated for stock. Um, custom, maybe, yes, but for stock, no, so this would be painted gloss black, or semi-gloss black, like it says to paint in underneath here. And here we have our final assembly, and step 11 is, of course, the front end of the assembly. So here it shows our car body popping onto the chassis. It also shows the custom decal here. This was sort of a 90s thing, a lot of kind of scallops. Then we have our front splash pan going on here, and our bumper gluing on in place of the splash pan. License plate bracket and a decal for our license plate, which we'll see at the decal sheet. And then our grill here. This is the Ford one. And the one in front is the Canadian style, they call it. But this was from a 57 Ford Meteor. Because in Canada, the Mercury's, it's actually a Mercury Meteor. The Mercury's were uh, dressed up Fords, American Fords in Canada. Uh, now here's another thing too, you can put on the stock headlight bezel which popped out, kind of gives it a fisheye look, as well as putting in the lenses here. Or you can switch that for the custom one which should go flatter to the um, front headlights here on the Ford. Step 12 is the final assembly for the rear, and here we've got a little bit of custom stuff going on as well as stock all in the same image, so you have to pay attention here. <laughs> We have our rear taillights, and this is a stock one here. Or you could use the flat custom one. Or here there's a special custom one with a chrome-plated taillight bezel and these little tiny bullets. And they're all clear red. And then we've got our license plate going in there, as well as the license plate decal on top. And then a rear splash pan and our rear bumpers. And thankfully, back in 1993, Ertl gave us all the paint uh, charts and recommendations here. These Fords had a lot of two-tones going on in them, um, as well as single-tone. So single-tone exterior colors, of course, Raven Black, uh, Colonial White, and all these other colors. 
you can see here is our interior. So you've got cloth, dark blue, hang on, what's this one? Dark gray, cloth, and then any vinyl in there would be light gray, and this would be black on the body. That could actually look pretty cool. Menacing. <laughs> and then down here, if you had your two-tone, so just looking at that, raven black and colonial white. Now you, you'll have to look these up. That could be white on the roof, or it could be white uh, on the upper doors, you know. So you have to see what the Fords look like. But here again, we've got dark gray cloth with uh, light gray vinyl on a black body with a white top, I guess. Yeah, or a white body with a black top. Could be either way. Anyway, there's all the dots that would correspond with what these different things were. And that will conclude our look at the 57 Ford Fairlane instruction sheet. And now we can take a look at the plastic parts. Here's the body of our 57 Ford model kit. And it looks quite nice, nicely proportioned. There is a cross frame sitting in here between the doors that you need to remove. And, but look at the flash on here. You've got a flash window going on. This kit did see a lot of uh, releases over the years. Um, there are quite a bit of different things going on here. You can see like a plastic bead going around here as if they welded the inside part to this. There's some old marks underneath, which of course you have to clean up. Uh, parts, tree removal points that need to be removed. However, it does have Fairlane in here and a nice script. Actually, with a bit of cleanup, this kit is quite nice. There again is the script. Oh, uh, the little pegs here for mounting the interior. There's also two little holes there and there. They don't go all the way through, but at one time those are for sunken uh, antennas. And then you can see a little dot around the wheel well opening. That was to be cut out for the drag race version using big slicks. But none of that cool stuff is included in this edition of the kit. This, of course, came out in 1993. So they're trying to be hip and happening by adding in sort of like uh, Boyd Coddington style um, custom features of the day. You can see that nice Fomoco water bottle there. I actually own one of those somewhere in my collection. But anyway, there it is. Once we remove the body shell, we can see our interior underneath here. Uh, there's those little loops to go on the pegs. And out here we have our steering uh, kingpins, or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> There's our pedals here. Uh, now, if we uh, look here, you'll see these four little sunken holes in the carpet. Now, originally, there were a custom set of bucket seats that went in here, and a long console that went all the way across as the custom components. These little holes here, there was pegs that went there and the bucket seats had stocks on the bottom of them and they went into those peg holes. So those have been removed, of course, for the more modern seats. There's a nice little window crank molded in here and the ashtray on the armrests. So it's pretty well detailed and thought out. The pedals have a hole in the middle of them up top here and that's where your steering column will go underneath, nice and smooth. Uh, and there is a little hole here that again was for something, <laughs> like a shift lever, something like that. So basically there's our interior bucket. Next up we have our chassis. And it is pretty uh, decent, as you can see. you got your upper A-arms here. There's some flash that you need to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade, which is ideal for the shape of getting into the areas. Underneath we have a full perimeter frame, and even though the exhaust pipes are molded in place, this still paints up really nice. Uh, if you can do it right, paint it the body color, carefully go in, paint your frame black, and then paint your pipes steel. You have to remove the runner here, which can be a bit challenging. I think if you use a saw on these pegs, 
it goes a lot better but look at that nice detail and that's from 1962 so again very nice kit now I kind of hate to zip through these gray components like this but we do have so many other kits to go through so anyway here we have our three remaining gray parts trees and there are a lot of components on this there's our door outers and our door inners as well as the two hinges that hold them in place here's the 90s style bucket seats and the rear bucket in the back also our rear wheel backs and our telescopic tilt steering up here there's the bottom and top of the modern gear shift lever our steering wheel these are the license plates one popped off <laughs> uh, there's our front splash pan our custom hitters here our uh, rear taillight bezel housings the stock steering wheel the front headlight bezels the battery the uh, heater and then there's our front wheel components and our dashboard hopping over here we have our stock bench seat and our rear bench our hood all our engine components and then we've got some suspension pieces down here as well as the dog and the differential so let's take a look at these a little closer up into the camera lens let's quickly move these off screen okay we can start here I'll just highlight some of these there you can see the wonderfully built dashboard looks just like the real Ford one a little vent on the top for defrosting windshield or as a speaker not quite sure which if some of you Ford guys know let me know in the comments down below okay let's go on there's our upholstery in the interior those door panels if you turn them over a couple little uh, sink holes in there but I don't think they're too much of a worry I would sand around the edges of the doors just to make sure they fit seats are quite nice as you can tell you could use those on uh, some of your other projects if you want the more modern look to them uh, it was a good effort back in the 90s just to update the kit a little bit but I do miss the original uh, bucket seats in there they were quite nice okay looking at this back in the day these components were actually chrome plated um, but somehow they weren't doing it in this kit well at least this part is I actually have old instructions that's your uh, bottom of your a-arms again nice detail there's that stuffed animal dog thing the differential really uh, interesting shape on there the one complaint I'll have about this kit is this box here if you actually look at the original Ford engines they were a little round air cleaner it kind of looked like the differential <clears throat> but at any rate oh there is some engraving on the stock manifolds here can't really see what it says though and then finally we get our whoops <laughs> our uh, stock bench seats which have the nice cloth inserts in here and then our hood now if you look underneath there's a square cut in sunken in there at one point there was a blower that stuck through this kit which is long gone of course then you got those again <clears throat> and then looking at your engine nice detail on that 312 actually it's really well detailed considering the vintage there's that um, console shift lever so be careful with that one our carburetor our air cleaner and the intake manifolds and all the nice goodies and I always like that air cleaner it's really nicely done okay so that basically completes our quickie look at all our gray components here and now we can go on to the chrome and here we have my favorite part of all model kits of course the chrome tree and here we've got our Ford turbine style wheel covers as well as these more modern 90s vector style wheels I think they were called vectors there's the air cleaner the modern version the 90s version and we've also got our Thunderbird valve covers they did add the Thunderbird logo on here there's our mercury meteor front grille this of course is the Canadian version 
There's the American front grill, and then our oil pan, top of the radiator, top of the radiator to you. The rear bumper, front bumper, and then there are a few little custom components left from the old days on here, but not much. So anyway, looking at this, you can see the nice detail. It was a well done kit. Modern air cleaner, all that. So now these little chrome circles here are actually from the original 60s kit. They are uh, for your rear tail lights. And then these ones are for the front headlights if you don't want the original Ford look. And these guys, you have a choice of putting in these Cadillac style red bullets into here, like that. So you can see how nice that looks. But again, that was from the 1962 series kit. On the back, a couple little mold marks you gotta sand down and whatnot. Paint the back of these flat black so you don't see them up through the underneath of the car. Oh, and there's that uh, Paxton supercharger right there, the motor for it. But anyway, there's all our chrome components. So just to move this uh, along a little bit, we have our glass, our rear tail lamps, our two metal axles, the Firestone Wide Ovals and the Firestone Supreme Tires here, all in this shot. Uh, now, as you can see, you get your front and rear window. You do get a lot of headlights, and you may be wondering why. Well, I'll show you in a minute here. Anyway, there's these little backup tail lamps and the uh, side windows. Now, these clear plastic um, parts trees here are actually from the original series kit. Uh, they never changed any of this, even though they stripped down the amount of parts they recommend you use. These little red boomerangs in here, the uh, clear taillight blanks, which you could use on this kit, and then we've got four little red Cadillac backup lights and our actual Ford backup lights. Now the tires are really nice. You have to cut out the central web. These Firestone uh, wide ovals, they came out in the 90s. They were an upgraded tire, and they have a nice little groove in here that you could paint a red line tire or white wall in there, blue, gold, whatever you want. Then the Firestone Supreme tires here, they're older, but they're still quite a nice tire. Firestone Supremes came out in the 50s, I do believe, and they are uh, the upgrade to the original Firestone regular tires that were in the 30s cars. Again, there is nice detail on these red components. You can see the uh, actual like rocket style tail lamps in here. Jet age from the 50s. Now these boomerangs, they're actually Edsel tail lamps. The sad part is the housing is missing. And these, of course, are Cadillac bullets. And then there's our glass again. Remember to put your headlights in up and down, not at any angles. There's uh, smooth ones in here. There's little ones for quad headlights. All kinds of goodness. So again, let's just clear this out of the way and I'll briefly show you where those tail lamps and headlights went. So very briefly, we have our original 57 Ford Fairlane 3-in-1 Trophy Series instruction sheet. And I'll just quickly show you where that stuff used to go and what was included in the original version of this kit that's sadly missing in our 90s release. So here we have our original release, and as you can see, you've got your body here. Now, I didn't, I'm not going to show you the stock stuff because, you know, it's, it's the same. But here's our custom. This is the regular custom. So there was a rolled pan in here that used to come in the kit. The quad headlight housings with our quad headlights and Nerf bars. Then you had a whole series of scoops you could put on for the roofs, which were quite popular. One here on the top of the fenders. They have these cool side pipes. There's extra scoops for wherever you need them. There was also a wheel cover here, so you could blank out your rear wheels. Sunken aerials, I showed you the hole for those. There was a whole series of housings for the taillights. I guess that's still the same, but there's the flat one, or you could put in this Cadillac one in there. And then there was a ring 
for your chrome uh, bezel in the back so you could put that on to extend this out leaving the little fin tops there a rolled pan underneath with a recessed license plate in there uh, there's a the little Cadillac tail lights going in I mean all kinds of cool stuff for the custom that we don't get now also included were these styling parts now someone cut a thing out of here because there was a little trophy stand thing that had a the description of the car on it an easel there's the rolled pan uh, these front covers popped on and then there's the your circular headlights here you popped in and you got a tubular grill as well which is also missing then on the back of this they give you these which are the Edsel bits again there's that rolled pan popping in there with a recessed license plate there's where the red boomerangs went in. There was also a chrome piece that popped on here and custom Nerf rear bars. I wish these parts would come back in because you could actually use these on the 57 Thunderbird as well. And I've got an article uh, from the 50s where they actually show you how to put these on. You, weld, you could weld them out here or you could reverse these, move this one to there and that one to there and have the uh, boomerang kick inward along the rear deck panel man i wish these components would come back but wait there's more here we have the radical stylizing and there you get an entire front nose clip which almost looks like the 58 ford to be honest but that glues on and they recommend you bevel these edges in here so you glue this on and then the beveled edge will work out better for your uh, body putty to fill in uh, there's the front going in with these chrome dual headlights and this long bar grill pops in place then up here we get this entire redesigned rear end cone which is cool kind of reminds me of like a 60s chrysler or maybe a valiant or something and then down here it shows you put in the red tail light here you can put in the clear tail light there the backup lights or you could have the uh, four red tail lights across the back and then your license plate goes in there but i mean look how cool all this stuff was and where is it uh did round two re-release these kits with these parts back in if so let me know in the comments below because i know round two did bring out this ford and then the final part of the original instructions that made it all so cool is that you got custom hints by george barris the man himself and he always gave you these sketches and little ideas of recommended things like here using a bunch of parts from some of the dragster kits at the time you can make your own 57 ford drag machine and then using the different hubcaps and tire combinations as well as in here that he's talking about putting in the um, 57 chevy custom grill instead of using the one in the kit and then the different types of headlights you could put on in place so again, awesome stuff that I wish would make a comeback. But sadly, we're stuck in the 90s, and Generation X seems to have gotten ripped off in this model kit. <laughs> well, we got some modern bits, but, you know, nothing like what it was. Anyway, there's our stripes on the side. Very 90s looking. We have a Tennessee ATN 612 license plate, and the Super Ford magazine license plate, which is okay if you want to build, like, a magazine-based car. But... Anyway, there it is. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just gonna open up the door here. These all got hit in the high river flood and I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels and that of course is repaint. Well, that car looks so much better now. Now the next car we're going to look at is the 57 Ford Thunderbird. 
And of course, this again is in our 57 Ford series. Now, if we open this up again, very nice, gigantic write-up. I don't think I can fit all of this in the comment section below if I'm putting in the other two cars. But at any rate, it is quite a nice history. Again, folding down, we see the uh, how to build and advanced tips for modelers. Again, this 57 Thunderbird used to be a fully fleshed out AMT kit, but it's been stripped down quite a lot. So what I'll do here is zoom in so you can see what's going on for this kit in 1993. So this is very basic. It says, note white walls may be painted on using acrylic or oil artist paints. Use a good triple zero brush. Oil paint may take several days to dry. I found that oil paint on these tires never dries. <laughs> so use your acrylics. But anyway, uh, there's a three-piece wheel going on in here. This is for the stock version. Uh, there's the outer stock wheel, and that would go in here, and there's this wheel back. Or you could have the, you know, like the Beach Boys say, the uh, sunken chrome reverse wheels. They sure look pretty. Actually, that's Jan and Dean. But anyway, so the idea is these are chrome, and you put this retainer ring through the tire and then this one through the back. Uh, then you get your reversed wheel. And then on this side here we have the deep dish slotted wheel for custom with its wheel back and the wider vinyl tires. So again, end up looking quite nice. Moving into step two, you have your 245 horsepower special V8. This is a nice engine. It's actually uh, chrome in here as we'll see. Although it does say to paint it all red because that's the stock version. But if you wanted it custom, keep it chrome. you got your air cleaner, your intake manifold, your distributor, your valve covers, cylinder heads left and right, exhaust manifold, oil pan, fuel pump, front engine cover, your timing belts and pulleys, and your fan. Builds up really nice even though there is only one variation of this. Here we have panel 3 and this is very uh, simplistic. Easy for a first-time model kit builder moving into skill level 2 kits. You have your entire chassis pan with these pegs which go up into holes in the body. Little axle blocks in here. Solid steel axle going all the way through and you push your wheels in place and the engine drops in very nicely in the engine bay. The interior in step 4 is rather interesting. You've got a semi-tub going on here with these deep angled cuts in it. That, of course, is for our entire wraparound dashboard. You get your steering wheel and your tachometer. The steering wheel has the column molded in place. The shift lever goes into the floor. There are some pedals here. And as an option, you have a telephone holder and a telephone. You also get the interior colors here uh, for painting your Thunderbird. Here we have step five, which is the body assembly. Actually, pretty much the final assembly. And um, here it says you could cement your hood down and you could build this engine display stand and glue your engine on it if you want to display it in that way. There's all the body colors, the suggested ones. There's our interior. Actually, you would put this up in the body first because these little loops will fit in pegs under there. And there's a little clip in here to go under there. Uh, then bring this down. Here's your rear bumper. There is an option of the extended bumper for your Continental kit on there. And of course your uh, front chrome bumper here. Step six is very basic. You have your radiator shroud dropping in there. Radiator hose which will glue to the front of the engine and snake its way on this side. And your heater fan right there. Step seven shows the spare tire going in place. And it's cut in half here so it fits flat on the pan. You do get a nice chrome trim piece, the front and the back, and then our tail lights will pop in place, and you can put your fender skirts on there as well. Step 8 shows our windshield and the chrome frame getting glued in place, which go on the body. There are some sun visors you can put on. There is this fastback hardtop roof. That's part of the original custom series. You also get the window for it. There's our stock fold-down roof. Or convertible roof and the rear window which will pop in place on that one. Step 9 very simple just shows your headlight bezels going on here 
with your headlight inside. And remember, these bezels are painted body color. So you could actually glue them on first without the headlight in place, then paint your entire model. Scrape out inside here to remove the paint to get your glue contact surfaces with your headlight. And there you go. And step 10 is our decal placement, which is not too much. Again, being in the 90s, you do have your decal going on the back here. <laughs> and then along the side, you get this nice ziggy zaggy crazy 90s style stripe, which was popular back in the day. And that's about it. And that completes our look at our 57 Thunderbird instructions. And actually, this kit would be pretty much better to start with uh, first up, instead of trying to do the 57 Ford Fairlane or the 63 Ford Galaxy. Now, I just want to show you this really quickly. This is the actual 1962 instruction sheet from AMT Ertl. A customer of mine gave me this stuff. He was clearing out his place. And fortunately enough, there were a few of the styline parts still sitting in the box. So I could build a more flashier 57 T-Bird. Not fully, but anyway, I've, I've got more than the regular guy. <laughs> and again, this is um, what we got ripped off of in the 90s. And actually, I think a lot of these parts got dropped just after the 60s. Let me know down in the comments below... Uh, when this ended. Now one thing that's really cool in these instruction sheets from back then is this short story on styling and again written up I don't know if George Barris wrote this or somebody did but it shows you all the, the uh, cool styling things you can do to your car here whether you want it with like the long back here or to cut it off and make it short and sporty um, all the different types of features opening up your wheel arches in here or covering them up as much as you can and sort of how to figure out if your um, putty work and all that is even on both sides of the car really ideal stuff that I wish they would include in this kit again so again like the 57 Ford Fairlane I'm not going to show you the stock uh, instruction sheets because it's basically the same thing but here's the custom stuff and you got these nice wire wheels with the knockoffs or the central hub in there um, the interior is the same. You get the extra telephone. You get some gauges under here as well, which was nice. There's a rolled pan with a oval-shaped grill that pops in, and these custom headlight bezels, which I do believe are supposed to be Frenched, which was uh, the sunken-in type of headlights. You get these nice bumperettes. It was a screwed bottom kit originally. Um, there's all these dummy spotlights that get added on. There's a custom rear fender skirt. You got lake pipes and the cover at the front for them. Uh, down here, you get these nice pontoon nacelles that come on. You can glue them on your trunk lid as well as the chrome bezel here and the big backup lights. And then uh, something popular for the late 50s that didn't really catch on too much was rear grills. So you could have a grill at the front of your car or one at the back with this nice roll pan. I have these pieces down here as well as the pontoons, but I'm missing the chrome nacelle bits. But anyway, so I could build a slightly updated bird. And here's the general instructions for attaching styling components, applying body filler, sanding the surface, and painting, which again would be ideal to have in the new kits. And then here's the upholstery bits, and you actually get a model of a trophy in here. And here's more of the stylizing where you are the designer. And here you get this Batman style nose, top and bottom, as well as the long extended rear back panels, which I think I've got the bottom piece, but I, that's all I have out of this. There's these scoops for putting in the front. You can put one on the roof or on the bottom or both. There's that custom fastback roof, which is still included in the 90s kit with the glass. They also give you these funny little shape things, which you can you know, glue on whatever you want to do. You can sand them, you can use them anywhere. Uh, but that's missing from our modern version of this T-Bird. And then carrying on for our Batmobile nose, there's these front headlight covers, which are aerodynamic. The vertical tooth grill and these Nerf bars, which are really cool. I wish they were still around. These really long reverse, uh, what do they call them? Reverse cone tail lamps. And then Nerf bars in there. And you can see where the fin ends and then the 
body panel carries on. Then down here, if you don't want like that top piece, this is what it would look like with the bottom. There's a big long chrome bar going across there. And then these half tail lights that would kind of drip off the top. And then here there's a bunch of these universal fillers, they called them. You could turn them into scoops or whatever you wanted to do on your car. There's our Continental kit going on. And again, that extended bumper with these different style tail lights. Uh, again, all this nice stuff that is gone, lost through time. Hopefully RC2 will bring it all back. And then you couldn't finish off an instruction sheet back in the 60s without custom hints by George Barris himself. And here there's a lot of cool things like using the wheels out of the 40 Ford, I do believe it was, and using the 36 Ford roof and cutting it uh, just at the front here so that it better fits the Thunderbird windshield. Then down here you've got your drag bird, which again uses one of the blowers out of the dragster kit, as well as the wheels and tires and a little roll bar. And then here you can do a Bonneville T-Bird by again using the roll bar, using some full moon hubcaps, uh, cutting down the windshield, which I think, I don't know if that was included in the kit or not, uh, drilling up your intake manifolds up through the top and using 36 Ford uh, headlight and uh, using them in reverse to give you this nice cone up front here. And then at the bottom, they had this shelf display where you could hammer in this funny piece and then hook your car onto it. So again, a lot of th cool ideas that are lost in this kit. So now we'll look at our tan molded plastic pieces. I know this doesn't really look like tan on film, but it is in the real world. So the 1957 Thunderbird was, of course, the last year of this style before they went into the larger bird. Again, this is nicely done. Uh, you get your little grills up here, your Thunderbird script, your door handles, the fin, which was the only year of this Thunderbird with that fin. Um, again, styled off the 57 Ford in the back. These are really uh, poorly done around the tail lamps, so just be prepared to really try to sculpt that back into factory stock. Um, T-Bird script is on there. Again, if you turn it upside down, you can see where the screws went in, which now are the pegs. There again are the little bits here for your interior, and it loops into this hole up front here. A couple of really high mold marks which need to be sanded down. Again, like the 57 Ford uh, Fairlane, they give you the little line under here so you could cut open those wheel arches for the big fat tires. Under the hood, a lot of detail, your battery and everything molded in place, which makes it quite easy to actually build. Again, a lot of flash on this kit, but that was sort of a 90s affair. Uh, will look good once you get it all together. Next up we have our chassis, and like I was saying, it's basically a one-piece pan. Again, a lot of flash in here, you could clean it all up just to make this thing sit together better. Get that detachment point off of there. But underneath, yeah, detail's not too bad. Cross frame, of course, for strengthening up convertibles, since there's no roof. A couple of mold marks here. They're actually where the screws used to be. If you look on the other side, you'll see the pegs there now. Again, a little bit of cleanup, but, you know, if you're doing this as your first time kit, it can get done pretty fast. Here's the rest of the components that make up the kit. And again, like I said, based on those original 1962 instruction sheets, we are missing a lot out of this thing. But, you know, you, there's still enough to build a stock 57 T-Bird. There's our hood and our roof section. Here's the only piece from the old days. Well, actually the telephone is there too, but, you know, the only cool piece. This is that uh, fastback roof, which looks kind of too long for the car if you don't have those extended fenders. There's our um, covers for our wheels, the spare tire, license plate, blower motor, there's a stand for engine which again has a lot of sink marks which needs to be cleaned up, the telephone, the extended bumper for the Continental kit, radiator uh, shroud, there's the little square blocks for uh, your axle, not sure what these components here are. 
um, headlight rings, your interior, your steering wheel on the long column. So, oh, and your dashboard here. So let's just bring, well, I'll do a couple of pieces up into the camera. It's not too much here, like I said, so. Spare tire cover, you get the nice Thunderbird logo on the back. You get nice hood detail here. And a couple of mold marks underneath the roof that need to be cleaned up. Bringing up our long roof there. And see the nice teardrop shape again. Mold marks need to go away. There's our dashboard. It's got the interesting factory style tuck and roll along the top. A little bit soft. It's got half of the door panels molded in place along with the dashboard. Which does make it interesting to paint. But still not impossible. Uh, what else? We got our interior here. The tuck and roll. This was a special pattern for 57. Again, a bit of mold mark here. You have to get in and scrape it off. There's a nice carpet texture detail. And our floor pedals molded in place on the bottom. I like the uh, crinkle hose here, or her radiator. Uh, fender skirts have some mold marks inside, so clean them up before you get beginning. Uh, what else? I guess that's about it. Steering wheel looks nice. There's the console off the back. So if you want turn signal levers, you got to find out, I guess this is, that drops down in the center there. So you drill it on this side, whatever. No, I don't know if they had turn signals, but anyway. So that's our, uh, our look at all our 57 Thunderbird components. Sorry to rush along. Again, like I say, we got one more car to do after this. But that's basically it. Here we have our two chrome parts trees, and as you can see, there's a lot of empty space in here. Probably at one time, all those styline parts were in these spaces. But anyway, I mean, I think what happened is in the 70s is when this thing got stripped down. Um, 70s was a time when they started making kits sort of boring. <laughs> anyway, there's our rear bumper. The uh, cover for the spare tire. And our front bumper, which was redesigned for 57. There's those turbine wheels again. Uh, these are the custom wheels, which are sort of 70s style, and or maybe early 60s, 70s. Then the chrome reverse wheels, which are still nice to have in here. Our chrome oil filter. Those would be the headlight bezels, I believe. There's our uh, tachometer and our window screen. Oh, we still got those gauges and the shift lever. And then down here, one thing that did remain from the 60s, this is the entire engine, all chrome plated. So again, you could strip the chrome by using some Easy Off oven cleaner, or keep it all chrome and put it on that engine stand as a showpiece. So let's just take a look at these two components. These ones are done nicely, so wouldn't hurt to show them off. Look at those nice Ford wheels there. And then we've got our custom ones. These are the slotted mag style. And then our chrome reverse wheels, which are also the steel wheels. Uh, let's turn that over. Oh, those are the tail lamps, I think, for the Ford. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, moving into here. We still have the car from the trophy that I showed you in the original instructions. Unfortunately, like there's a hole for mounting it, but there is no trophy stand anymore. There's our Thunderbird valve covers and the nice chrome engine. Looks really good. And there's the Thunderbird logo also for the stand that doesn't exist anymore. So you'll have to figure out how you want to display those. But again, I mean, look at the nice detail on there. Really good stuff. Unfortunately, those awesome styline pieces are gone forever. So here we have our window glass as well as the red tail lamps, our axles and our tires. Now I'm not fully sure on this because you did get two of these. This is actually from the 57 Ford Fairlane kit, which of course we saw a bit earlier. 
but you could use these in your Thunderbird instead of the chrome ones that you have to paint. There's our rear glass for the convertible. There's the one for the fastback roof and our front windshield as well as our headlights in here. Now these tires are the old Firestone ones that you find in the 1930s Ford kits. Again, there's the detail there. The tread is just basically lines. It does have the pie plate style uh, edges on it. A nice good tire. And then to make it more modern for, I guess, the later 60s, you have these Goodyear Polyglass GTs. These, of course, are bias belted tires. These tires are bias ply. These ones would be bias belted. And they do have the big web in there that you have to clip out, as well as a huge seam line running around there. So you want to use your tire spinning tool in a file just to make these all nice. And last but not least, just to round out our 90s version of the 57 T-Bird, we have these nice 90s versions of graphics going on here, which of course just consists of long stripes with squiggles all over the place. Uh, California My Bird license plate and the ever loved I Love Model Cars AMT Ertl decal that goes on there. And that's basically all you get in the 90s. I, let's bring this up, just take a look at this stripe. There are some nice colors in here. And oh, you can see where the kick would be in here just to go up onto our fins. But again, that's basically it. You know, there's no numbers for making this into a, a race car or anything like that, which is severely missing from this kit. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh, man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh, man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage found on YouTube. And I'll leave the link in the description below. Now, one kit that didn't get all its components removed and, you know, skimping down into basically nothingness is our Galaxy 500XL, the 1963 car. Now, this thing you're going to love because this has got all those old Styline components and everything in it, and it ends up being very beautiful. As you can see, you get this nice illustration on the front here, and again, a mega write-up on the 63 Ford. Maybe I'll, I'll try to partially put some of this in the comments down below, or the description down below. You also get a nice little set of plastic model tweezers. And then the important stuff like make sure you sand and glue and whatever. And then as we open this up, you can see it's a big huge fold out. So again, I'll just zoom in on all the little components. So to start with, we have our super stock engine assembly. And as you can see, it's pretty simple as the motor goes. You get your left and right hand side engine block with the transmission included. The oil pan, which does have a hole in it for the metal axle to go through. It says to paint all non-chrome parts Ford blue. There's our intake manifold with the um, cylinder heads molded in place and the distributor. So all that just drops on. And then we've got our Thunderbird valve covers. And then on this side, just move that over a little, pardon the sound effects, <laughs> you have the rest of the engine going together, which shows our exhaust manifolds, our generator and fan belt assembly with our fan in place, the tricarb holycarbs, and our air cleaner. Or... You can build this supercharged engine, which again, the first assembly is like the one for the super stock. So we won't need to go into detail. Oh wait, there is a difference. There's a finned oil pan going up underneath here. But the rest is about the same. So let's just move over a little. Make a crinkle noise. 
And there's our supercharged engine. So now you get this 671 GMC blower going on there with our hood air scoop. It's kind of reminiscent of the, the parts found in the 1940 Ford for that Buick nailhead motor. Um, I've got that video in our playlist here somewhere. There's the exhaust manifolds, again, the same as the stock one, but here you get a magneto and this gigantic blower belt assembly. So there you get your hot rod motor. Now, I'm not sure if this is interchangeable with the other kits in this uh, three-piece set, but you can always try it. Next up, we get our wheel assembly, and this is really cool because, again, we're using the metal axle style wheels, which is um, universal to all three kits. So if you did want to try to backdate some of these cars into, um, you know, what they look like in those style line um, instruction sheets I was showing earlier here, you can use all these different wheels and tires. So there's our Firestone tires. Our stock outer wheel will pop in there. And then here you get the steel wheels with the optional moon hubcaps, which would be good in that 57 Ford kit. The uh, Fairlane, I mean, because <laughs> these are all Fords. And there's two 57s. But anyway, that's basically your wheels. Moving into step six, the chassis assembly. Again, this is very simplistic, basically a promo style, uh, promotional style model kit. There's our wheels going through with the metal axles. The engine would go down so you could slip that axle through the oil pan. You do get a separate battery, which glues in front here. There is the optional, the disc brake rotor and a jack stand. So you could leave one of these wheels off and put that in its place. It does make a very nice detail for your car. Now I'm going to show step seven, the stock interior and step eight, the custom interior, uh, both on the same page here. So anyway, uh, here's our seat belts going down. And we've got the stock bucket seats, our dashboard and our steering wheel, all as one big console. And then our interior bucket, which has a bench in the back and the column shifters. And then for our custom assembly, we've got these nice bucket seats with an insert, roll bar for racing, a square style steering wheel, much like the Chrysler's, a cover to go on top of the console. And then you also have a vertical console going in here. So again, lots of cool custom components. Next up, we have a bunch of the really cool advanced custom assembly components. Here you can see we get these side fillers to change the look of your roof, as well as a rolled upper pan and a rolled rear lower pan, <laughs> just to slicken up the back end here. And if we move our instructions across, Here we have, actually, let's just redo this as a two piece. Now we get into some of the really custom, cool, advanced. Now we get into some of the really cool, advanced custom assembly components. Here you can see our stock body, and we add in an upper rolled pan and a rear rolled pan lower just to slicken up the back end, as well as these side filler pieces for our roof to change the side profile of our roof line. Next is the advanced custom assembly for the front end. We have a little extension piece for our hood, as well as these circular front end and a optional front extension as well. And then it starts to show us how to apply the putty to smooth the round components onto the front fenders. This continues with our sanding of the putty once it's dried, and then our painting. And of course you want to apply some primer first to find out where it could be low on your putty. As well as when you're sanding, remember to do some cross sanding just to make this all nice and flat and smooth. Once you have your putty all smoothed out and the body is painted, you can add these really awesome chrome headlight bezels and the optional well, not the optional. Once your painting putty and once your putty primer and paint job have dried, you can then apply these really awesome chrome headlight bezels, your clear headlights, this grill bar, and license plate shroud, as well as a Nerf bar up in the front. 
And for the back end, we have the advanced custom trim area. And here we have a uh, taillight bezel, chrome one going in place, as well as the taillight and special trim, another Nerf bar in the back, and a little rear grille. Now, if you're not completely satisfied with that look, there is, of course, this other look where we have the headlight bezels again, this sort of waterfall grille, because it starts from the front of the car and rolls over. And then this really awesome chrome bumper, as well as our four headlights again. And if you want to change the rear end of the car and not use the first suggested custom components, you can use the chrome bezels again with the bullet tail lights, this custom bumper and the exhaust tips, as well as this grille in the back. So again, more cool stuff for your custom. The next panel shows your choice of either using the custom hood or the stock hood, the body, and our firewall. And it says paint body and hood before proceeding. Stock colors are as follows, raven black, ragoon red, Corinthian white, glacier blue, oxford blue, silver moss, and chestnut. Paint the firewall flat black. Next up we have our interior assembly here. Of course the bucket and the glass popping up underneath with the retainer clips. There are some custom headrests in here which consist of this bar and the cushions gluing in. And of course we've got our radiator and our mirror which is universal to stock and custom. Next up we have our stock final assembly if you are building this as a stock version of the car. We have our rear bumper and our taillights with the taillight trim popping on in place. We've got these nice chrome fender ornaments. There are horns that go in behind the front bumper and radiator. And there's our rear assembled bumper. And all of this drops down onto the assembled chassis. Or you can go for the custom rear assembly. And this is using yet another rear custom treatment. This, of course, is without all the extra components, but uses this grill here and uh, <clears throat> bumperettes. Actually, it's a rear pan, not a grill, pardon me. The V-shaped fins, antennas, fender skirts, bullet taillights or flat taillights, bumperettes, another tube grill, and a license plate. So, oh, and then I do believe you also get these square taillights. So you got round, um, bullet shape, and square. So again, there's a lot of custom options to this kit. And here are the mild custom final assembly components for this kit. And now this would be uh, showing the back that we just looked at. And here you have a choice of diff uh, side trim, megaphone side pipes, or bullet shroud side pipes. So three different types of side trim. We've got our side mirrors, spotlights with lenses in them, fender trim, air horns, a custom grill, I'll just call this one grill one, and a custom front bumper with bumperettes, actually I guess that would be a rolled pan, and a license plate. And now if we look down here, this is grill number two. So here you've got these giant headlights. You can add in for making quad headlights or leave them off. All of these have lenses, and then there's a little tube grill that you can glue in between. And then this is for the uh, custom with the blower. So again, or you can use a stock hood and just have the regular um, Thunderbird air cleaner style. But again, look at how much you're getting in this kit. This is a full out style line kit, and I'm glad they did not remove components out of this thing. And if that wasn't enough for your model building pleasure, Hepcats, you also get a mascot, a pair of bongos, a TV set, a fire extinguisher, a record player and cover, telephone, the bottom part, and the part you talk into, <laughs> the receiver, and whatever. Anyway, and the trophy base and a trophy car. So again, a heck of a lot of components in one single kit. Now, in case you're wondering what the plastic components look like for this kit, we have our body here. And as you can see, this is the hard top convertible style roof. It was a steel top, but looked like a convertible top. Got the nice little grill here, our indentations for our spears. The radiator wall 
support is as one piece on here with of course little round bits for putting your screws up through the bottom. This might have started off as a promotional kit but anyway we do get some cool aspects to it. Let's just pop that back a little. Uh, you get some nice side trim. Oops, the door handles, a Galaxy script in place. There's pegs underneath to lock everything in place. Uh, not too bad on mold marks, actually. A lot of little holes under here that, of course, you drill out for your antennas and whatnot. And overall, quite nice across the back. Looks pretty accurate to the 63 Ford. And again, up front. So, overall, really excellent and well done. Following the body, of course, we have our chassis. And you can see the little pegs which will go in the holes underneath. There's a bit of flash around the edges which you'll have to sand out. You got uh, the squares in here. I'll have to drill some of them out. That's where our axles to go through. And if you look underneath you can see all the nice detailing in here. Look at that big gas tank. Uh, again, it's all molded in place so you are going to have to paint around it. Saw this off and sand it down on the edges with your sandpaper. There are some mold marks up in the wheel housings here, which of course you will have to sand down. But overall, for what this is, it is quite nice. Here we have all the white parts and all their different parts, trees, sprues and whatnot. As you can see, we have a lot going on in here. Two different engine uh, manifolds and uh, engine blocks right and left hand side. We've got all these great custom panels and pieces going on here. Over in there, our interior tub, everything. It's all right here. So what I'll do is I'll just move these off to the side. And we can take a look at these parts trees one by one. And explain what's going on. Now, there are loose pieces here, so maybe we don't need to look at those in particularly. <laughs> a lot of parts fell off the parts tree in the box. Anyway, here's our first one. There's that center console for the interior. It's got three gauges in it. Our fan, um, horns, license plate shrouds. These are the V-fins, and you could actually use them on other Fords. Uh, seat belts. Got that roll bar. There's our hood with the hole in it. Here we've got our little telephone and the bongos, our belt drive. Lots of great things. There's the TV tuned into AMT on the channel. Hmm. Lots of neat stuff in there. Seatbelts have nice uh, design on them as well. we just move to our next parts tree here. Uh, some of the pieces might fall off like that wheel. You can see the oil pan has a hole in it for the axle. A lot of nice detail on the firewall. Some other license plates here. There's our uh, our back panel, see the sunken in tail lamps, one of the fender skirts, there's a little mouse and the trophy stand, as well as this Chrysler looking square steering wheel, the, the little stand for our brake drum, of course lots of great things on there. I'm getting into this one, there's our front pan for those big massive headlights, stock hood, Fender, uh, sorry, bumper shroud thing. There's moon hubcaps, which you have to paint. You get these little tweezer things. These are the headrests for our seats. The record player box. The little side pieces for our roof. And then there's our interior tub. Of course, done in the 60s style. Again, you got the loops hooking in for your body. Nice console in the center, stock steering wheel, and our Galaxy dashboard. You can see it looks like the real thing. Again, very nicely done. Here's our bucket seats, the stock bucket seats, and then rolled pans galore in there. And what else can I show you? There's the stock intake manifold and, whoops, cylinder heads. We've got our bucket seats. There are some inserts that go in there. Again, nice detail work on these. 
and I don't know, there's our battery. Hooray! <laughs> okay, so that basically is all our white components. Oh, underneath the hood here, there's some old marks and things you got to sand out. But overall, should be quite good. Again, lots of stuff to play with in this kit that will look great. You can also use them on other kits as you see fit. Basically, that is our 63 Galaxy white components. Now wait till you guys get a load of the chrome. Here we have our chrome parts tree and one huge strip. Usually they would uh, cut it off here, here, and here and give you two components, but on this one they decided to go as one huge piece. So what I'll do is, I mean you can't really see what's going on here, so I'll bring it up into the camera. Let's go on this end. There's our stock front bumper with the 1963 license plates in place. There's our nice little chrome reverse wheels in there. Okay, and then we've got our blower, uh, the scoop. There's our disc brake. Looks like a mirror there. A grill. There's some of the chrome pipes. There's the uh, 670 or yeah, 671 blower and our Cobra air cleaner as well as some headlights in there and our shifter. Moving across we've got our antennas here. There's our rear bumper, stock one. The stock hubcaps, which are pretty cool. You could use these on like a, the uh, uh, 49 Mercury kit would look quite nice. There's the custom grill there. Almost looks like a Chevy component. <laughs> 59. The grill bar that goes into here. Fire extinguisher, our trophy. Bunch of the knockoffs. Uh, horns. These are the little uh, things for the uh, ex side exhaust. There's bumperettes there. Spotlights. Thunderbird valve covers right up in here. Um, the hood emblem deals. Oh no, maybe those are the mirror. I don't know. There's that big massive chrome front bumper for the custom as well as the side moldings. Rear bumper for the custom. There's the waterfall grill and the flat grill. And then we've got those headlight bezels and uh, more of the little nerf bars and little grill inserts and all kinds of goodness. Oh, a finned uh, oil pan for the custom. And basically that's all our chrome. So as you can see, there's a lot of components which you can switch with other AMT model cars. And finally, I thought I'd show all these parts together, including the decal sheet for this one, because there's not much going on on the decal sheet at all. No license plates. In fact, you could use those Ford Magazine ones from the 57 Ford Fairlane decal sheet just to throw on this so that everything has a license plate. <laughs> but at any rate, there's our front and rear windows. And they are a little crunched in here, but it, they do have the runners. You can always cut these off and glue the glass in solid. There's all our little headlights and whatnot. Uh, I've got two of these because one of them, the little cones broke off. Um, I didn't get two in the kit. These are from two actual other kits. Same kit. But anyway, you get your stock taillights, the flat round ones, these little funny button ones. And then those um, cone-shaped taillights, which are cool. Two metal axles here. And then Firestone Supreme tires, which are the same as, I think, in the 57 Ford Fairlane. And basically the tread just wraps around. And it's got a nice crosshatch pattern around the edge. Again, very simple and very nice. Our decal sheet here, as you can see, just consists of grids with little colored dots and another squiggle wiggle from the 90s. And that's about it. In 1980, my dad built me a special playset that made me the envy of the neighborhood. And now, Lobot, you will teach us the secrets of the Rebel base. Oh, snap! It's getting a little too hot in this place. Chewie, we gotta get out of here. 
R2, bring down that elevator. Oh, man. Chewy, see if you can get this thing started. Now we'll just take a quick look at some of the builds that I've made of these three model cars in the past. This is one of my oldest builds of, of course, the 57 Ford Fairlane. And uh, this might be actually one of the last kits with the original custom components from 1962 in there. As you can see as we come around the back, there's the rolled pan. The exhaust extensions are not quite from this kit. This is sort of all hodgepodge together. Originally this car was blue and it had a ton of decals, sponsorship ones, stuck everywhere. And then I repainted it, you know, maybe about 10 to 12 years old with the color you see it in now. Colors, I guess. Anyway, it was a second run of reconstruction that I did. But as you can see, it goes together quite nicely. Uh, my door hinges have broke over the years, but, you know, there it is. This one is a work in progress, just basically to test how I can get a two-tone on here of the uh, 57 Ford again. As you can see, it's actually I'm not doing too badly, but the uh, black paint is a little bit transparent. Of course, I painted it red first and then the black afterwards. But, uh, yeah, you can see where it's thin in spots, because the red shows through. But overall, this does go together quite nicely. Next up, we have our 57 Ford Thunderbird. And as you can see, it went together very nicely. Uh, the green paint on here is not the best. I did try to wax it, just to get it shinier on film. And unfortunately, I snapped off the uh, rear bumper. It's just sort of sitting in place. But it does go together quite nicely. As you can tell, the back end looks quite nice, just like a real 57 T-Bird with the exhaust exiting through the bumper. And again, there I used the old uh, Firestone white walls, or Firestone tires, and painted the white walls on them, just because it's sort of the right thing to do. And we can actually remove the top here, and you can see what it looks like with the top off. Again, the lines are correct on this. And the Continental kit does look quite nice. Inside I painted it with a uh, lacquer seafoam green, and that's actually the best part of this kit. Whoops. And we'll return her to center and take a look at the 63 Galaxy. Here we have the stock version of our 63 Ford Galaxy. And again, it's another one that went together really nicely. Uh, I used metallic paint, some lacquer, as well as bare metal foil, which is all our chrome up the sides. You can see as we swing around here, there's our back end. The license plate says it's a 63, which I think I stole off of a Corvette model kit. But again, it looks really nice. I used the Firestone Supreme tires. You can see the nice hubcaps with the knockoff spinners on there. And again, very nice. So stay tuned, I have one more to show you. Here we have the Radical Custom version of the 63 Ford Galaxy. And I built this one as a lowrider, just to get it a little lower to the ground. I don't know where those wheels came from, but it really gives it that low, sleek look. Along the sides I've used some gold-colored bare metal foil, and there's our too low license plate for a Missouri lowrider. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing or not. I also used some flocking inside on the interior, just to give it a better look. And the decals on the hood and trunk are actually temporary tattoos that I found in a dollar store.
And that completes our look at the AMT Classics Complete 3 Car Kit Set, which of course included the 57 Ford Fairlane, 57 Thunderbird, and the 63 Ford Galaxy. And I hope you enjoyed my builds of these kits. I do have another one of these on the go, the 57 Fairlane. Actually, I've got two. I'm trying to build one as the Canadian Meteor. Uh, but I was going to show them in this video. Unfortunately, they're half built. And where I have them located in my basement now, I cannot reach them. <laughs> That's what happens when you're filming like a million unboxing videos. Anyway, if you have built these, don't forget to share it with us on our Facebook page. And I'll leave the link for that in the description below. How did you like building them? Did you have fun? I sure hope so, because that's the name of the game in building model kits, is to always have fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great review of all three kits. This is kind of a rarity special video for the day. I do a lot of individual unboxings, as you may know if you follow this channel. So if you would like these kind of things, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. And until next time, everybody, give us a good thumbs up and happy model building. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it, We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.